like the way they're jogging down majestically. Clap, 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 clap. Praise God. Still are in God's presence. Hallelujah. Those of you joining us online, you're welcome tonight. Midweek service. We call it in our church Wisdom Word Service. It's called Midweek in most churches. In some, it's called Bible Study. Whatever name you call it, Midweek Service, Bible Study, Wisdom Word Service, it all has to do with us. Uh, digging deep into the scriptures to learn his word and to know about his ways. <clears throat> to learn his word and to know about his ways. You cannot know God outside his word. Praise God. How are you today? Are you doing good? <clears throat> okay. We're starting a sermon series tonight. And the series may run through November, maybe to December. Um, for years, I've been dodging, dodging this kind of series because of the heroes. And by the way, quite a lot of truth uh, uh, is out there about the series, but there are also heroes and <clears throat> hyper-grace. Some people have pushed it to the point of what we call hyper-grace, what we call hyper-grace. But it's actually a, a series called New creation realities so that's like the series what do i call it <clears throat> new creation realities and our father in the lord bishop mike uh, during gkc spoke about it dr mensa touched a little bit about it and i felt led my uh, while i sat there that maybe it's time for me to do a series around new creation realities now new creation realities um was developed and designed, I believe, many years ago in the 19th century by one of the finest Christian teachers, I think, in the U.S., called E.W. Kenyon. And I, wrote, I read many of his books in the 80s, and it enlightened my heart as a young believer in faith to know God a bit more. As, as a young Christian, as a young Muslim who gave his life to Christ, I started to learn a bit more about my faith, about my work with God, about what it means to be saved, you know, so... That's what we call new creation realities. That's just the word. New what? Creation realities. It was E.W. Kenyon that popularized the theme and perhaps what you want to call the theology. It was E.W. Kenyon that popularized it, the theme and the theology behind new creation realities. However, under new creation realities, we have different topics. We have different uh, series. We have different teachings. And tonight, I want to start with partakers of divine nature. So you have to understand, the, my heart is trying to teach new creation realities. But under new creation realities, we have all kinds of subtopics. Is that clear? They're all, they're all around your saved, your new creation. It, it, the text for new creation realities is in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse number 17. So I'm going to give it to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. Project for me, media. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, it's very important, he is a new creation. So that's why we have the theme and the text, new creation realities. If anyone is in Christ, he is, give it to me again, media, a new creation. Hold things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I repeat, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So that word new creation, that's where we have it from. New creation realities. In other words, this, this new creation, what are the realities around new creation? Tell us more about what it means actually and factually from the Bible to be a new creation. So uh, what does it mean? I'm born again. Does it mean I'm going to grow taller, grow fatter, grow whiter, grow lighter, grow darker? What are the realities of this new creation? Because most times, people do not see visibly the evidences that we are new creations. So, we, we, so all the teachings around being saved, being born again, and, and all that started after Azusa Street. Don't forget, Pentecostalism died um, shortly after the church was born. After the church was born, there was no Pentecostalism. The first one, the first denomination that existed after the new, uh, the church was born in Acts chapter 2 was Catholicism. Was Catholicism. 
That was the first denomination that was born. Now, Catholicism was not born in the hearts. It was just what we call church. What we call church, there was no Catholic church in the book of Acts. There was nothing like that. The Catholic church, not what, that we call Roman Catholic, started after the, the state merged with the church. After the state merged with the church. And the state empowered the church to say church should be recognized. So we now had a state-backed religion. So Christianity became a state faith or a state religion. And the base or the headquarters was based in Rome. There were two churches. There was a Eastern church. There was a Western church. So the Western church had more money, had more power. The Eastern church was based in, in Turkey. In Turkey, in Constantinople, which is a modern day Istanbul, mm. the capital of Turkey, modern day Istanbul, because then the king that strengthened and backed the church was from there. So it was Constantine the Great that backed the church, that established the church, that supported the church, and turned, like many modern day Christians do not appreciate him, and turned many deities, many of their worship days and seasons into church worship. Does that make sense? So Sunday, he made it a Sunday. Easter, he made it Easter. So he was one that now strengthened all those things and said, let's now start worshiping. In his own mind, and people have vilified him for that. I would never do so. In his own mind, he was trying to say, wait, you know, you know what? All these people are all pagans. How do I win them over to Christ? I am a Christian. The only way for me to win them over to Christ is the days they worship their things, I will insist, stop worshiping, start worshiping my God, Christ. So I don't want to cancel those days for those days predated Christianity. What I'll do is I will transfer the worship from the deity to my God. So stop worshiping Ishtar, start worshiping Christ. Stop worshiping Sun God, start worshiping Jehovah on Sunday. So he started doing all that and that worked. Many other things that he did, but I don't want to go into that history. Then after Catholicism for years, almost 1,700 years of Catholicism before we now had what we call the established Lutheran movement. Before the Lutheran movement, there was other, we had other, uh, John Wycliffe, we have John Huss, all those guys that rebelled and said, no, we want to have our own Bible in English, we don't want to have Bible in Latin. Everything started with, why can't we just interpret the Bible into modern lingua? Why must we read the Bible in Latin? So I, I, I'm trying to explain that to you so you can understand how we have the new creation realities. So after all that, then you have Lutheran. Then Lutheran just thought, you are saved by faith. You are saved by faith. Not by you giving stuff, not by you paying stuff. And that moved until one black man in America created and gave birth to what we call today modern day Pentecostal movement. The man was a, was a William Seymour, he was a blind man, one high, and then there was a Pentecostal fire that fell in Azusa Street in his house. And then they, they had a big church. And then all other churches were born from that Azusa Street fire. Assemblies of God Church came out of it. Um, Four Square Gospel Church all over the world came out of it in 1956, 1934. So all other churches came out of it. Baptist movement came out of it many years after. Uh, and many other churches came. I, I mean, Baptists had existed before Pentecostalism. I mean, pretty much because they left England to go and start uh, a new movement back in the U.S. So, but Pentecostalism is the youngest, as it were, of all these major denominations. And then it's been spreading like wildfire. Wildfire. Now, this guy now called E.W. Kenyon began to study the Bible and he said something about new creation. Now, what does it mean for you to be saved? And you'll say, you are a new creation. All things are passed away. All things are become new. Look at the next verse. Media, please stick with me. I want me to be fast. Give me the Bible. I want to see my Bible. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18. All things are become new. Look at verse 19. You know I use King James Version, not, not NKJV, please. That is, give me the King James Version. King James, verse 17 and 18. You are going to verse 19. Who is the media? 17 and 18. 17 and 18. New King James, I don't have hands. 18, verse 18, verse 18. And all things are of God. This is what I'm going to now. Don't forget, it says in verse 17, all things are becoming new. All things. So I say all things. So we have he that is in Christ, you that you are in Christ. You are a new creation. 
So that's what we call new creation realities. Old things are passed away. We'll try to explain those old things now. You have to understand the word new and old. When he used the word new, he's trying to explain to you who you are now. And he said, hold things are passed away. Hold things are passed away. All things are becoming. What are these all things that are becoming new? What are they? How do we know these old things that are passed away? That's what we call new creation of Jesus. He now explains to us these all things that have become new. In the next verse, he said, all things are of God. So in other words, he's trying to tell you, wait a minute, the all things that are now new that I'm talking about are of God. So let's first of all sort that out. I'm not speaking of God, means from God or divine. So I'm going somewhere. All things that have become new are of God and divine. Does that make sense? All things have become new. So what are these all things? This will help you to understand your faith and your salvation today. What are these all things that have become new? I don't even know the whole things that have passed away. Passed away how? Does it mean spiritually nailed to the cross? Or passed away means disappear? Because those old things are not disappearing in my life yet. I'm still smoking. I'm still struggling. How come they are passed away? And then all things have become new. New how? I'm yet to see these new things. Oh, wait a minute. These new things are of God. So we have to now start looking at the new things. Not a new car. Not a new clothes. Not a new hairstyle. New things are of God. So for you to do these new things that are now we see where all things have become new, they are divine things. I'm going somewhere. They are what? Divine things. So that takes me to partakers of divine nature. So, so, so please stick your mind to those two thoughts. All things are passed away. All things have become new. And all things are of God. I repeat, all things are passed away. He that is in Christ is a new creation. So we want to teach new creation realities. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Because I'm a new creation, I have a new life. Listen, you have to immediately go to Genesis chapter 1. Because I will dwell more in Genesis chapter 1 for you to understand new creation. So just use the word create. Create. In the beginning, God created the, the earth and the heavens. Heavens and the earth. And then God also created man. So now, there's a new creation. So God is recreating. So before we now talk about the new creation, let's understand the old creation. So for you to have a new creation, there must be a old creation. Except I, I don't understand English anymore. Uh, he that is in Christ is a new creation. So if I, there's a new creation, there must be a what? Old creation. So if there's going to be a new creation, a, a new man, there must be an old man. So that's why we have the word old man mentioned several times in the Bible. New man, old man, old man, new man. But, but, but in this new creation, you and I have not seen a new physical creation made. You're not a new man made. But you have an old Adam and you have a last Adam. You have uh, old things are passed away with the old creation. All things have become new. With who? With what? The new creation or the new man. So when there's a new creation, so those called a new creation, the new man. So the new man and becomes is part of his new creation because you are in Christ, not he that is in church. He that is in Christ. Many are in church, not in Christ. So we're talking about Christians, so are you not, not churchgoers? So many people are in church, not in Christ. So don't let's deceive ourselves. And yeah, yeah, you're not a new Christian, you're just in church. You are a church member, but not a body of Christ member. You're not a Christian. So let's let's not deceive ourselves. But I go to church, I'm a new Christian. You're not a new Christian. You're, we're not looking, we're looking at you. There's nothing new about you. <laughs> nothing new. There's no new man yet. All things, now these all things are of God. Divine, divine nature. Now, because the most difficult thing to teach can be divine nature, but it can be very easy. Very easy. So let's go to Second Peter chapter 1 
I'll read verses 3, 4 alone. Second Peter 1, partakers of divine nature. I'm going to be explaining who you are and how, how do we share this nature. Look at, according as his divine power, please underline divine again. The word divine is theos. T-H-E-O-S from the word theology. And theos means God. Now, Gideon, this is very deep. The theo means God. I, I want to teach. I don't want to preach. Theos means what? God. So, it divine, not spiritual. Because we used to mix spiritual for divine. God is a spirit. So, we're looking at divine today, not spiritual. There are two different things. Because the devil is a spirit, but not divine. Angels are spirit, not divine. Divine is Theos, God. Because I used to think spirit, divine, they're the same. No, they're not the same. There are many spirits, they're not divine. Do you get the point now? Do you get the point now? So we're talking about divine nature. Divine. So we have to understand that divine. So it says there that we have divine power. Give it to me again. According as it's divine power, so there is Theos. Exocer is own God's power, something that comes from God. Power has given to us all things that pertains to life and godliness. That's the through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. Then verse 4 now says, Again, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these promises, these benefits, you might be partakers or sharers. You share of the divine nature. Having escaped, that means you are in a new creation. For you to have escaped the corruption means you are in a new creation state. You are not old anymore. So now what is this divine power? How do we partake of this divine nature. You know, nature is critical and divine is subject. It, it, it tells us what kind of nature we are talking about. To have divine nature means to have natural nature that is not divine. Someone like you saying, I was asking somebody today, I said water, water, uh, the word liquid, liquid means any mo molecules that can flow, liquid, liquid. So if I have water here and I have oil, and I have petrol, they are all liquid. But they have different nature. I'm not a chemistry student, but one is zero, two. They all have different components. So if you put uh, uh, light a matchstick, put near this one, nothing will happen. Put near here, it can be inflamed. Because the nature of this liquid is different from the nature of that liquid. Though they are all liquid. Am I communicating? So, so you need to understand the word we are going to be looking into is divine nature. Is it true that we are partakers or we are sharers of divine nature? So if we are sharers of this divine nature, how, how do we, um, how, how do we become partakers of divine nature? Is it by imputation? No, no, because of what Christ on the, on, on the cross of Calvary imputed it upon you. From today, you are here by carrying my nature. Is it by Fact, virtue of a new birth. Is it because we're now born again? So because we're new, watch me, we're a new creation. And so the nature of this creation is we carry divine power and divine nature. So could it be that this new man that's coming out, new creation realities, now that I'm saved, I'm born again. So when Christ said you must be born again, he was saying you must experience the new creation to be able to partake and be a partaker or a sharer, sharer of what divine nature and divine power. And so what, what is this nature? Can you tell me the nature of God? What is, what, so the, the objective is to try to explain to us what divine nature uh, it's, it's, it's like, what's it like? So I can have an idea of, okay, no wonder I operate under certain um, realms because I have divine nature. 
you know, since I have divine nature, I can see why I do things somehow the way I do things. So for us to understand that very well, this is part of the what? New creation realities. Am I communicating? So only those who are new creation can have divine nature. Does that make sense? You cannot be a partaker of divine nature if you are not in Christ. Does that make sense? You have to be in Christ to be able to partake of divine nature. Someone like you saying divine DNA. So if they pick a DNA, you can tell from the blood sample whose genes flow through your blood. So if you want to know if this child is my father, is my son, just pick the blood, pick mine, go do a DNA test. They reveal the gene genetics that this blood is associated with that blood. And so you can know that you carry, or that child carries your genes and stuff like that. So, so that's how we are regenerated. When we explain the salvation story, we use the phrase regenerated. There's a new gene in us at salvation. So not just the old man's genes, genealogy, because we have a genealogy of Adam, of Abraham, genes, but we are our Adamic genes, the old the Adam, all of us are from Adam's loins and Eve, we have the genes of Adam, we also have the gene of Christ so that's the new creation so if you look at you that you're born again he that is in Christ carries his DNA, his genes and you can partake of his divine nature it's there somehow in you. You may not be expressing it, but you've got it on the inside. You may not show it. You may not, because of lack of knowledge, understanding, you may not be walking in dominion, walking in righteousness, understand God's kind of faith, understand Zohe, the God's kind of life. Because when we look at divine nature, we're looking at what makes God God, and that a bit of that is in us, in the spirit, without us even knowing it. That's why some of us can do not struggle to explain holiness. Because holiness is not something that is of human nature. It's spiritual in nature. No man can be holy without the help of God, the Holy Ghost. Holiness is not something you attain or you achieve. It's divine nature. Life of God is in me. It's called Zohe. You may not know it. I have the life of God in my temple. Righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's who I am. Faith. Faith. God calls those things which be not as though they were. No wonder some of us walk by faith, not by sight. Because we are partaking of divine nature. There's something in us that's also divine. We kick, we kick each other. When somebody speaks, I feel the baby leap within me deep, call it unto the deep. I carry divine nature. Some of us may not have expressed it, developed it, may not have uh, enabled it to come out, but it's there somewhere on the inside of you, divine nature, a seed, the seed that aided your birth, oh sorry, your new birth is the incorruptible seed which is called the word of God. So at the point where you are being born again, recreated. The fact that my baby is still two years old, two months old, does not mean so my baby may not fully grown and to express that it looks like me, but it's still my baby. Check the blood, carries my DNA. Give it some time, you begin to see the baby begin to crawl, walk. Right now, it's just only right there in the bed. Cannot do stuff that I do, but just give it some time. It's still my baby. Still carries my DNA. So, 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 so let me now go into a bit more to understand this new creation. Because for me, new creation reality is very important. Particulars of divine nature are extremely important so that we can know who we are, our identity in Christ. And, and, and in and our, our new faith beyond religion. And because this, this will aid us and help us in our walk with God, if we understand it very well. The, 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 <clears throat> the, word, the word is, the word creation is Fusis. It means to produce. It means to produce, to recreate, to bring forth, to bring forth. So for us to understand new creation, 
Could you please permit me? I don't want to go into the nature of the children of wrath. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3. Can you please permit me to go to Genesis? I want us to dwell a little bit on Genesis today. Let's go back to Adam and Eve. Because you cannot understand new creation realities or divine nature. And if you don't understand Adam and Eve, that's where the beginning, everything started from. So you can help us a little bit. So please open the Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. And throughout this month, we are doing this series called Dominion Mandate in church. Second service, I'll be preaching on that, Dominion Mandate. And I, have, I believe that Eagle's Flight has to do with Dominion Mandate. And we need to understand what it means to have dominion. I don't think many of us understand it. The seed is there, but we're not leaving it out because we don't even understand who we are and how we're supposed to live. Genesis 1, 26 and 27, quickly. Let's go to understand i want to try to explain divine nature and human nature and god said let us make man please note this i'm going to take it easy in our own image this is very important for me there are all kind of teachings out there on genesis genesis has become a chapter that I, i'm very happy that there's an awakening out there in the body of christ for the world last 20 years i've been praying and seeking god's face that younger generation will desire the word again. I probably thought I would never see a generation who will yearn and thirst for the word. But all of a sudden, I'm seeing it on social media. Gideon, people are just hungry for the word. I'm like, wow, this is what I've always prayed for. So I have hope that uh, after a while, if we push out what God is doing here out there, more people are hungry out there. They will rush this house to be fed with the word. So it's not the prayer movement has come and it's gone. The deliverance movement has come and gone. So the word movement is back. The faith movement has come and gone. The word movement is back. So movement comes and it goes like seasons. And right now, the young people just want to know the word. So we're going to go back. And that's why you see all kind of heresies out there today. You hear all kind of stuff because there's a thirst for the word. So he says here, because eh, we want to understand new creation. So let's go back to the old creation and see what happened. Then you can understand new creation. And God said, let us make man in our image. Oof. And after our likeness, similitude, let them, please note the word man, sounds singular, them, plural, have dominion. And so I read a book, I was telling my wife about dominion mandate. Some believe dominion is when you are fruitful. That's not true. Very simple. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Over, not the word over. Say dominion. Say over. Say they say dominion. Say over. So th that explains to you what dominion is all about. Is that clear? Let them have dominion over. Over. Let them rule. That's all. Let them rule. That's what it means. Let them be in charge. Over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, and the cattle over the earth over the cattle and the earth, the forums, and every, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Next. And God created man, please note this, in his own image. Now look at the next event. In the image of God created he him. Then he says, male and female created he them. So, so I'm going to stop there. So, <clears throat> you see in this passage alone, there is a male and female, there is the image of God. So, what's the image of God? So, that's a nature. You see, you're going back to my divine nature. I'm going somewhere. Divine nature. So, that's I want to explain to you what Adam lost and how Adam lost that nature. It was sin that corrupted. And so, when he fell, at that point in time, he had divine nature. He lost it. So, Adam and Eve, listen to this, were created in chapter 1 of Genesis. I strongly believe, I personally, that there was a creation of male and female <clears throat> in the realm of the spirit. Because in the image of God created Eve, and God is a spirit. John chapter 4 verse 24. God is not flesh, a spirit. Luke chapter 24, 22. As no flesh and bones. A spirit has no flesh and bones. And God is a spirit. So even I don't know anything, I know God is not physical. God is a spirit. And that's the image of God. 
So there are many theories out there about image of God. Is it physical that we can see visibly or touch physically? Now, but we know in that passage, that was the first level of creation. Then in chapter 2, watch me. In chapter 2, God had, had created Adam and Eve, but God needed to put them in a body. So because God is not physical, so do not say, oh, God created them in chapter 2. God formed in chapter 2, verse number 4, 5, 6, 7. God now formed man and put the created man inside the formed body. Because this man created needs a body to express and to work and to live. So let's give what we have created body. And the Lord God formed. And the word here is different from the word created. Bara. Bara is the Hebrew word created. Formed is different. So people tend to say, oh, people tend to merge chapter 1 and chapter 2 together. Without understanding that 2 verse 7 is speaking of a different experience. This one says, and this is Yotza. And Yotza means to, to form something. So even though God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nose. That man became, man became a living soul. Now I feel what he released, that breath, <laughs> is this man he created. So the created man, because God is a spirit, he released his spirit into the formed man without the breath, it's just dust. So when he fell, he said, dust thou art. The dust that fell is going back to the dust. So the formed man is different from the created man. So the created man, my opinion, is after God's image. Because you not know, a formed man. Some believe, some believe that both the formed man and the created man are in God's image. And after God's likeness. I'm not going to debate that. I don't want to begin to enter some... Um, argument over, no, it's not one, it's one, it's not two. But I know in Genesis chapter 1 that when he finished, chapter 2 says he finished the entire creation, the words, the works of his creation, chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, and then he rested, and the seventh day, everything closed, he closed the book. Man is made, world is made, everything is done. However, let's put the man we have created into a body for that man to be able to exercise dominion. After all, we said, I have dominion. How can I rule without a body? That's why if you read, I think, 1 Corinthians 11. Give me 1 Corinthians 11, verse 7. Is it verse 7? I, that, that's a passage I think I ran into some, some days ago. Is it 1 Corinthians 11? Yes, give me verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Why? Why? Read it now. But did they say the woman the image of man? The word image is removed in that and the woman the glory of man. Not the image of man. Let us make man after our own image our own likeness and so God made and God created male and female created in them that's we believe there's no female spirit there's no male spirit but God created male and female created in them male and female created in them male and female created in them but they need a body to express what they want to do okay we're going to create a body for male but so he created a body and released a breath watch me he pulled out the woman to lie but you know he did not put a fresh breath in the woman Why didn't he put a fresh breath to recreate a woman? Eh? Eh? That breath released was both male and female. When he pulled out a woman for man, he didn't put a fresh breath. <sighs> now you two leave. There was only one time he released a breath. That I said, male and female created in them in his own image. But you are the glory, but you are in my image. So women are in the image of God. Maybe we carry the glory of a man but not the image of man. Do you get the point now? Because the breath there is nine. You should not have dominion too. So women can have dominion. Should have dominion. 
So it's not man to have dominion. Let us make man. Man, that means both of them. Let them. So women can go to their own spheres and rule. <laughs> rule. Exercise your dominion with the skills you have. Now, to aid you to have dominion, you may need to be fruitful, which is where I think fruitfulness now comes. Or like we're saying, fruitfulness is dominion. That's not true. So for me now, for instance, to have dominion over school lady, I need to have 7,000 membership church or 10,000. Why? So that a few of them will rule in movie sector. A few of them will rule in the politics. A few of them will rule so that we would understand, organize, and release ourselves to go and begin to rule in certain territories, in academics, in education. We have three, four schools from this church, and they are there, the finest schools here, and we're going to put governmental, divine governmental structure and agenda out there. But they won't know why we're ruling, because we have numbers we can rule. Numbers we hate our ruling. So when I keep saying that I want to have some for, for a place, who don't understand it. The reason we need numbers it's not because we cannot rule without numbers, but it helps you in your domination, dominion agenda, dominion mandate. Because then you can spread yourself over 20 spheres, music, entertainment, movies, you get. And so when Gideon is producing music, they will suppress that. They will just have a strategic play of ruling. So people here will buy it, will push it out, will get their friends. There's a way we can make it look like we are more than this. And we rule. Through that, it will push it out. So you can rule, and she can rule. The real estate person here, we rule. So we are all ruling different realms. But I'm not, I'm not going to speak about dominion mandate today. Let me speak about partakers of divine nature. Because for you to have dominion, you must be strategic. Churches that have dominion, they don't, they don't do it accidentally. Strategic, and that's why God, God made us in His own image. He has strategy in mind. They must rule. They must be in charge must be in charge. So let's go back to where we were in Genesis. So you see now, so God made man after his own image and his own likeness. Yes or no? And he said so, and the image God made them, I just told you about it, is spiritual, but he formed the body and now put the man created inside that body. Yes or no? The man created, God picked it up and now put it in the man formed. So the man formed can now function and start living out and expressing what God had called the God man to become. So let's go. So that's part of our new creation. Now, that man created. Did he have divine nature? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 to explain a bit of divine nature to you. Because if you don't understand this divine nature, we'll keep struggling. What is divine nature? 1 Corinthians 15 verse 44. Quickly. 1 Corinthians 15 44. I'll read a couple of verses from that passage. It is sown in natural body, it is raised in spiritual body. Please note the word spiritual. It is a natural body, but it's a spiritual body. There is a natural body, forgive me, there is a spiritual body. Next verse. Next verse. So it is written, the first man, Adam, was made what? The last Adam was made what? Quickening spirit. Two different things. One is a living soul, a man became a living soul. But the last one, a quickening spirit. There are two different things. That is, it can what quickening means to bring alive. To what living means it is alive. It was living, not quickening. Let me tell you the difference. Quickening is ability to bring from the dead. Living is just means you are alive, you cannot bring from the dead. So first one, Adam, was a living soul. The last Adam was not a living soul, it was a quickening spirit. Meaning it came, watch me, it came to quicken those that were dead. That were alive, but now dead. Like the prodigal son, this my son was lost, now found dead, now alive. Quickening. So the last Adam, Christ, came to recreate new creation, new creation to quicken. The first one did not come to quicken. All of us were born alive, but dead to, towards God. But this last one came to quicken us, bring us back to life. Does that make sense? Do you, do you get the point now? Quickening and living are two different things. Both carry life, 
but one innate, the other has to do with those dead to bring them back to life. I don't know if I'm making my point quickly. Next statement. Because I want to explain something to you. So he now says, next verse, next verse. <clears throat> How be it, that was not the first, that was spiritual, but that which was natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. I'm going to divine nature. For you to understand divine nature, because God is a spirit. So you have to now understand that divine nature is spiritual in nature, but bigger than spiritual is a spirit. Next verse. Next verse. The first man is from the earth, earthy. Second man is from the Lord, heaven. Next verse. Now, I like this. This is what I like. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Now, I'm explaining the new creation to you now. Now, this is what I love most. As we have born the image of the earthy, we shall also bear. Okay, so let's stop there. In the, what he was just telling you now, what happened in Genesis 1 26. Let us make man at our own image. This word image. So there's an image of the heavenly. What kind of image is that? What's the image of the heavenly? It looks like I can see the image of the earthly. Image. Adam. We must bear the second image. Image of his dear son. Colossians chapter 3 talks to us about why we are saved. We are supposed to now bear the image of his dear son. That's why I love studying the gospels to see Jesus and his, whatever he mirrored is how we're supposed to live. Everything he lived, we're supposed to mirror it out. The image we must bear, those of us that are new creation, must bear the image of the heavenly. Must bear the image of it's an image. You see, for we have put on, look at this, a new man, Wali Ajayi, which is renewed out in knowledge. After who? Image of him, that one? Who created him? No, no, Christ. The image of him, the new man, new man, new creation. Oh, God help me. New creation, not the old man. New creation. We have put on the new creation. We're now born again which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that give me this passage in amplified and message after the image of him that created him how god created adam christ created us so he was recreating us that's what he's saying there oh god exactly don't lie to one another you are done with our old life. It's like a filthy set of heel fitting clothes. I like it. You've stripped off and uh, put in the fire. Now you are dressed in a new wardrobe. Someone say a new wardrobe. Say a new wardrobe. Say neighbor, I'm not wearing Gucci anymore. I'm wearing Christ tree. So Christ is our new designer. He's there. Look at it. You have put on a new spiritual self who is being continually renewed in true knowledge in the image of him who created the new self. Give me living by a message. There's a new designer. So that one is different. That's the person that now created us. So this new us, this new creation is created by someone. Look at it. Don't like that message. Uh -huh. Every item, I like this. Go back to the, every item. Continue. Continue. In your new way of life is custom made. Try it. By whom? So say, 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 custom made. Custom made with his label on it. So when you look at me, you see the label. It's not Gucci. It's not Hugo Boss. You go, hey, it's not Amani. It's Christ G. It's Christ, it's Christ, Jesus Boss. So if you look at it, the label I'm now wearing is a different label. That's why he's saying that in the new man. Is renewed after the knowledge of him that created. So he is the one that created this new man. Just like Adam was created. He too is created. You don't get it. Adam created uh, Enoch, Seth, all the children. All of us are sons of Adam physica physically. Now Jesus is recreating. Last Adam. 
also recreating spiritual people, you and I, to partake of divine nature. Oh God, it's difficult for you to understand. So he tells him, this man recreated us. He recreated us. So there was a new, a new creation. So just like he did in the beginning, he's now recreating us. Let there be man. Let me recreate you. So that, and you come to meet him. You, he puts you to bed, wakes you up. You're a new creation. All things are passed away. All things are become new. All things are of God. Is there? And that's what we call the new creation realities. And so it's very deep. And it's very, very deep. So, and now, and now it now says all the old fashions. And now what? What's like Jewish or non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, inside that, outside that. All those things are what? Obsolete. All things are passed away. In fact, he calls that the old man. So I don't understand why people want to be new creation but embrace the old man you see, we have to debate that is it possible to be a new creation and we see more of the old man and is it, maybe you are not yet new maybe just admire the new creation but because if you're a new creation the old man is dead the old man is all things are passed away 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 all things are passed away. God will help us. So this is very deep. Go back to 1 Corinthians 15. So he says, as we have born the image, those as we have born the image of the first man, give me 1 Corinthians 15 again, media, we must also bear the image of the heavenly, the image of the, we've born the first image, we must bear the second image. 1 Corinthians 15, 49. Give it to me, media, media, I want to read it down. 1 Corinthians 15. As we have born the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heaven. This is where I am. How do we bear? How do we wear that image? Let us make man after our own image. Why must we do that? Because when Adam fell, what happened? It was sin that corrupted him and made him to lose the image. When Adam fell, I kept saying it. Listen to me. Listen. Adam lost the relationship with God, fellowship with God. Because when God made Adam, he made him uniquely different from other animals. He didn't just make him as living. The image is not just living for other animals who are living. But he made, he put himself in there. So when he walked out of the garden, he lost spiritual relationship, lost that, that, that divine nature. But he didn't lose his human nature. So people, that's why I'm, I'm angry with those that think, oh, he couldn't have, they, he had dominion. His, his seeds, they all had dominion. They conquered the moon, the space, the earth, submarine, up till tomorrow. So we have to go back and teach ourselves the truth about all this nonsense we are teaching in church. I say, oh, Adam lost everything. Then God now, Christ now gave us. Mm -mm. Christ, that's like Christ came to restore spiritual things more. The, uh, the spiritual things more because he lost that fellowship. That's why God had to now create in him Abraham, a friend of God. Then Israel, the people of God. But God wants to inhabit all of us so that we can all become God's tabernacle and we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So God can live in all of us. You get it? So Christ came to restore that without us losing this. So the fact that you're not saved does not mean you are saved. God will live in dominion. You get the point? But this should aid you, help you, to live in dominion. But the fact that you're born again does not mean you should not you should you should not be living in dominion. You can live in dominion without being born again. That's my point. That's my point. You can, live, you can live in dominion without being born again. You can. Because there's something in you that God dropped in there. And even at, he created you to rule the fish of the sea, this, this, everything. Domin have dominion here. But I would like you to also, while you're in dominion, can we have fellowship together? So it's the fellowship you lost. Not the dominion mandate. Do you get it now? So, so, so you moved out. So these are our partakers of divine nature. Because you need to understand divine nature. Because what, what we mistake is because God is a spirit. So we tend to think it's not spiritual nature. What is spiritual nature? Demons are also spiritual. The devil is also a spirit, spirit being. The devil is a spirit being. 
those that do ritual killings just activate their human spirit <clears throat> to do wickedness the prince of the power of the hair so, so divine nature not spirit nature I'll, I'll be telling you, it's Theos I'm talking about, it's Theos, not Numa it's Theos so what is this divine nature what are these nature that we're supposed to partake of share, partake us of divine nature partake us of divine nature, do you, do you, are, are you getting something, let me now quickly rush, I have a lot more to share, John chapter 1 verse 12 to 13 it says to us how we can partake of this divine nature. There's a lot more scripture for me to share, but <clears throat> I've not even finished from verse 49. I will come back to explain to us in that first Corinthians 15 in a short way. I just want to explain to you how you get to that divine nature. You see, it says, as many as received him, to them he gave power. That means legislative authority. To become what? To become what? Sons of God. Simple. That means power to become not <coughs> you're not born as a son of God you become it you're not born physically as a son of God you are a son of man but for you to be saved it's a power he gives to us from today you are saved like on Sunday those that got saved here they become sons of God sons of God by virtue of legislative authority invoked upon them by the church they become saved that's how you become that's a part of how you embrace divine nature John chapter 3 verse 3 to 5 says to us he that is from above is above all he that is from the earth is here that is, he that is born of the spirit it means it's a different thing the nature well, you see, I'm, I'm studying about 10 of divine nature I'm going to try to explain to us righteousness is divine nature God cannot be unjust Love is divine nature. I'm not saying benefits of being a Christian. Eh, that's the nature of God. God cannot hate. <laughs> God cannot lie. Oh, I wish I could explain this to you. But I'm trying to explain divine nature. So, so you can understand what we say, partake as of divine. It's strong. But this, is, this is why God is God. I'm not speaking about human and transcendent. I'm talking about the nature of God. The nature. Partake us! Of divine nature. Titus 1 3 says, God, we cannot lie. Not will not. Does not have the capacity to lie. Not that God will not lie. God. Eh? Eh? Never cannot. So if God says this is black, it's black. You must agree that your eye is deceiving you. Even if you are seeing blue and God says black, it is what? Because God cannot. So you must be wrong. Let God be true, all men liars. Romans chapter 4. Very simple. Titus 1 3. So God is truth. That's why Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The life of God is here from the life of man. Zoe. I'm teaching you already. I'm not mentioning the nature of God. Though. So you can see that these are the things that we partake, we don't even know it. Now, those that partake of the nature of God understand it. The nature of God. The nature, partakers of divine nature. Ah, I'm not sure we're ready for this. Partakers. How, how? Is it by imputation? Is it by just imputing on us or by being born with it? At the time we are recreated, we had it in us like a seed. Yes! Yes, because your nature came, your first man, your first nature came with you at birth. The seed pumped into your mother that came and produced you, came with the nature of man. That's how as you're born, as you're growing up, you don't bark like a dog because that's not your nature. You cry like a human being. If a baby barks like a dog, you run. Am I right? Because that's not the nature of man. That's not the nature of man. So it's the seed. Oh God. I want to go into next week teaching already. It's the seed that you have to do a DNA to now know the nature. You know, those uh, uh, scientists that go with the uh, micro, 
microscopic to look at the organisms around it. When they want to know the nature of COVID-19, they began to check the germ, the flu. They said it came from a bat in Wuhan, in China. They did a lot of work. All those people, they checked it. Ah, the germ is ready. How does it spread? They now came up with a recipe, a, a drug, a vaccine to deal with it. You have to first understand the nature to, to deal with it. Am I communicating? Okay, let me ask you a question. And I'm going to stop here. Were angels created with divine nature? So when Adam, when the devil left heaven, was he still carrying divine nature? Were they created with divine nature? Because you have, I have to force you to know the scripture. I intend to make you Bible scholars. I'm tired of all those people that abuse you and, this, and disgrace you on, on social media. Because I can photo members don't know the word. It's a shame. Why angels created with divine nature? When Adam fell, before he fall, before the fall of Adam, did he have divine nature? You're right. After the fall, he lost it. Angels, demons, don't go. Demons added to. Huh? Until they fell. So after they fall, they now lost divine nature. And you think that if the devil had divine nature, well, this is I want to be like God. So, so he meant he could not have lied. He could not. So when he was tempting and planning to, to tempt God, so he was not, he had divine nature. And so he said, God cannot lie. Uh, I'm on your side. I'm on your side. Don't mind them. We have to look at that. I'm not saying they're not spirit beings. Don't forget I explained spirit and divine. Because we have to understand that. Spirit, angels as ministering spirits, they are spirit beings. Different from what? Oh, yeah. Different from divine. Hey, divine. Divine is different from spirit. Divine is different from what? Spirit. The devil is not divine. They are spirit beings. Eh, they are not divine demons are not Satan is not angels are not he made us a little lower than Elohim so angels are even not divine but they are ministry spirits to the saints that's why you have Almost the opposite of divine is diabolical. Diabolos. That's the root Greek word for Satan as adversary. The devil means diabolos. Satanos means Satan. Satanos. Diabolos. From the word diabolic. In intent, in evil, in thinking, in so. Do you get the point now? My time is almost over. I'm looking at the time because I have many more scriptures to go through. But I want to stop here. I will continue next week. So we can, we, we can understand that in the beginning, God created animals, the plants. They have different nature. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 39. Give it to me quickly. 1 Corinthians 15, 39. And then celestial and terrestrial beings. All flesh is not the same flesh. Jesus, I wish I could do this. All flesh is not the same. There is one kind. That word kind means nature of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. That's why fishes can survive in the ocean. Birds cannot. Fishes cannot fly. Birds can fly. And not in their nature. It's not in their nature. So you have to know your own nature human nature and divine nature. So he now says, <clears throat> next verse, there are also celestial bodies. And bodies what? Here. There. Here, terrestrial. There. But the glory of the celestial is one. The glory of the terrestrial is another. That, telling you that different nature. Church, these things are different. 
So when we are saying partakers of divine nature, the fact that they are celestial does not make they are divine. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star even differs from another star in glory. So why are you why are you trying to fight your neighbor? There are different celebrities, and celebrities have different glory. The whiskey glory different from Sonia Day's glory. They were both celebrities at different generations. They are both stars. And even though they are stars shining, celebrities, they also have different level of glory. Tell somebody, you just shine. Say you shine, just shine. And you have your own glory. Don't, don't copy Evelyn's glory. Let Evelyn shine as a star. Me too, I will shine as a star. You do shine as a star. Why are you looking at somebody as a star? You are to shine as a star in your own small. You have glory now. You have glory. We're all stars. <laughs> We're all stars. You may be shining more than me, but I'm still shining. <laughs> huh? That's your business. Am I right? Tell them you're a star. Some people are just stars in their bedroom, in their house. Their, their dad and their children celebrate them. Yes! You're a star there. <laughs> Praise God. My time is up. I want to explain more scriptures to us. It's almost 15 past 11. Because I want to explain the nature. So you can see that there is body terrestrial, there is celestial, there is animal, there is plant, there is man. We all have different natures. Exactly. So, but we're talking about what? Divine nature. How are we partakers of divine nature? How do we embrace? Because we are partakers of divine nature, does it make us divine? No. Let us make man in our own image. Not let us make another us. Let them just, when you are imaging me, I'm still me. Like a wise man said, if you look at yourself in the mirror, you see an image of yourself in the mirror. That's not you. Just an image. The real you is still here. There's an image of you, but this is me. The image is still not you. Do you get the point? The image is still not you. The Lord will help us. Put your hands together for Jesus. Those of you at home, if you've been blessed, God, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Let me take one or two questions. I can, it's a series. New creation realities. That's a series. We're going to continue next week. Because once we can explain and understand 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he that is in Christ is what a new creation. That's what I'm going to. So this new creation is embracing and enjoying divine nature. So when I explain ourselves, what are the, how do we live out this divine nature? That's what we're going to go to ultimately and objectively. So put your hands together once again. Put your hands together once again. Any questions before I close with a word of prayers? I'm sure I've been able to stir up some, some stuff on your inside. Any questions about what we've taught tonight? Give if you want to ask, ask. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Praise God. Before I pray, any questions please from the floor? Any questions? Next week, we'll be asking them questions also from online. Sometimes those online have questions. We used to pick up from the media room questions from those home watching us online. We need to get that back. Pastor Kulis will make sure that is done. It's not what you do habitually that shows that you indeed have character. Rise to your feet, everybody. Put your hands together for Jesus once again as we pray. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Can you please just celebrate your nature that you are partakers of divine nature? Just celebrate it. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. Wow. I now understand who I am. I understand my identity better. I understand I'm a new creation in Christ. Your identity. There must be no identity crisis. We refuse and reject it. We don't want to have people with identity crisis. No identity crisis. Le kozoto prane de bojata karada kaprozotene. Le prozotone ke prane eke dezeke te braka bababa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you. We give you praise. We celebrate 
Oh God, our identity in you. We celebrate who we are in Christ, in faith. He that is in Christ is a new creation. All things are passed away. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Come on, celebrate. Celebrate. Thank him for who you are in Christ. Thank him. Thank him. Your holiness is not yours. It's his own. It's his nature. It's his nature. It's imputed on you. Righteousness from above. My God. My God. Celebrate your grace. Celebrate what God has done and how God has lifted you. Give him praise. Give him praise. Those of you watching at home as well. Celebrate. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. 